Everyone, welcome to the freaking show, man. It is nice to uh, have you. It's nice to have you. I know you can't see here, but we do have Dog back on set today. He's very excited. You can probably hear him. Yes, um, it's been a busy day. A lot of cool stuff going on here. Today's video is gonna be on a um, the Authority Rifle from Battle Arms. Some of you are gonna be very familiar with Battle Arms because they have been around for a while, and some of you might be a little bit of a newer thing. So we're gonna break it down and kind of give you some pros and cons, do our normal thing. Couple uh, quick plugs to keep the lights on here. Um, if you guys need real estate help, let us know. 1911 Syndicate, as you hear in every freaking video, because we gotta pay our bills, we're actually a real estate company. So we operate in, um, I live in Utah, Chris lives in Arizona. Believe it or not, we have more things going on outside of my own state of Utah than we do in my own state. So and we do. in my state. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, uh, you know, so anyway, helping a lot of people out all over the country. Happy to help you guys out. Um, Patreon exists if you guys are ever feeling generous. Like, you have too much money. Like, if you have too much money, um, you know, we'll take some of it. And then last plug for this video, um, not really a sponsor, but thank you to Shutter Bombs. You will see some of the smoke that we've yeah. been playing with. It's been kind of a fun prop tool, if you will, that we've been adding into some videos. And um, those guys, again, Shutter Bombs, been really cool. Um, not a formal sponsorship or anything, but just been using some of their products. It's cool, it's fun to play with. We look yeah. super cool and tactical yeah. and apocalyptic running through it. So that's that. Um, battle Arms. So. Kind of what we normally like to do is before we just start diving straight into the gun, give you a little bit of a snapshot of who the company is. So Battle Arms, and yes, I work on notes, everyone. And we're also clear. Yep, so slow your roll there at home. Formed in 2009, so they are a parts manufacturer as well as complete guns. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of their business actually centers around uh, the parts business. So if so. you if you look at this, and we'll kind of go part by part as we go, but a lot of the shit on this gun, I mean, is really stuff, I mean, I mean, basically all of it is stuff that they make. I should say, that, I mean, it's not that every single thing is made in-house, but it's like, look, it is their battle arms charging handle, battle arms safety, um, billet receivers, all that kind of stuff. So there is a lot of stuff, even the grip, which can be changed the angle and everything. Point being, they're a company that I would say applies effort. They are not just a parts, assembler they're a company that actually makes a lot of their own stuff i lump battle arms so i had a battle arms gun back in about 2015. yeah when okay. we first met huh yeah yeah so they had this one called the vader yeah and it was cool it was kind of very space gun ish it's not the most practical thing in the world i don't think they make it any i'm positive they don't make it anymore it had a fixed stock that was like it wasn't carbon fiber, but it was probably titanium or something, and it was not the most comfortable to shoot, but it was cool. It was very space gun-ish. My point to this is Battle Arms are the category. They make creative shit. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give a caveat. There's a lot of companies that make some kind of wild guns that go into the category of completely tacky. Um, if this, for example, if this Magwell had a skull going around it... <laughs> Um, that would, yeah, it's not my thing. People are going to get mad. You want to know that. the truth? You want to know the truth? I don't even know who makes that. <laughs> oh, I do. I know it exists. I don't even know who makes it. So you can all go make fun of me right now for not knowing who makes the ugly ass skull Magwell receiver thing. They also make a Spartan helmet one, like a <sighs> bunch of stuff. Just yeah. got worse. <laughs> do we have a Punisher skull one? We must at uh, some point. Yeah, um, prob yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. Or you will see wild guns that are like, they look li like it's um, American flag Cerakote. Now, this is not, this is, I love some American flag guys. I've got one in my home, but um, I don't need a whole gun that's red, white, and blue. It's just a little obnoxious. Point being, there's some wild guns that are hideous, and there are some guns that are kind of unique and have some fun that I think maintain a classy vibe, which is what I lump Battle Arms into. This is kind of a little bit of a wild, little bit of a unique gun, but it doesn't venture into the territory of tacky. And that's kind of what I like. We okay. can have some fun. Don't get me into tacky territory I'll I'll is give what you I that. request. Okay. So that said, let's go ahead, give you a little tour of the gun. As mentioned, the Authority line, um, this is their full billet ambi gun. And if, we, you know, there's not a lot of companies that do that. No. Y you know, I, I, I mean, call And it's it complete it ambi. I mean, you can probably run the piss complete. out of this as a lefty. We're going to 100%. That is literally about to be point number two coming up. Cool. Um, so, hey, for whatever it's worth, everyone, 775T6 aluminum receiver, which, I mean, I've endorsed for years. I'm and a I big fan. continue to endorse it, right? So um, let's talk about ambi controls. Actually, swap a roof with me real quick. Sure. Um, so for those of you that don't know this, 
Uh, I am a lefty, which means I'm super fucked up. Um, so everything is a little bit more difficult for me in life. Ambi guns, I'm amongst the minority of shooters that actually uses ambidextrous controls. Do you consider yourself a minority? I'm Irish left-handed ginger. ginger. Can you... Is that considered though, or are you just another basic left-handed white dude? I'm a an advanced white dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm an advanced <laughs> operator <laughs> level oh, white geez. dude. So everyone, here's the deal. Um, I would, say, and I told Battle Arms this, so uh, w leading into reviews, I try to do, or Chris, same thing, like try to, if there's some connection point that we have to a company. So this rifle, FYI, I forgot to tell you guys, um, is not mine. It came from Battle Arms. Actually, they reached out to us and were like, would you like to do a rifle review? And I was like, sure. So this is not mine. As of now, planning on sending it back. Obviously, I could buy it if I wanted to. We'll figure all that stuff out. But right now, probably going back to Vegas. I think Vegas is where they're, they're based. It does say on the receiver if you want to get a confirmation on that. What? Other side. Oh, yeah. I don't give a shit. I know they're in, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're around Vegas. They're in a little town around Vegas. So, um, I'm one of the few people that uses ambidextrous controls. I will tell you, as I told them point blank, I was like, you guys might have the best ambi controls that I've played with, right? And that is from someone who actually uses it. So here's what we got. So the lefty mag release would be right here. And it's really, really good. The problem with some of the ambi mag releases is that they track a little too high. Go away, fly. So this one is like, yeah, everyone relax, right? So this is where I would be shooting and I just take that finger immediately off and then, sorry, hang on, I can't do this one handed, right? I would be shooting, boom, boom, boom. And then there's the, the mag, right? So I don't have to look at it. I of course could rotate over, find that mag release and then new mag would go in and then that big fat lefty bolt release is, oh, I'm sorry, that's the uh, it's up, yep. stand, yeah, is, is right here. Lock that's it to the rear. What would, and show right. that. And then that's what would drop the bolt. It's really good controls. Um, even the normal mag release for you fucked up righty folk um, is really big. So you do have kind of an oversized mag release there. Even the paddle for dropping your bolt for your righty folks, it's just good. Like it's good controls. I'm harping on little details, but if you shoot um, and like actually get out and train and stuff, you're gonna know that the controls are pretty damn important. They matter. Like, they're pretty damn important. So um, everything with uh, the safety, which currently is set at a 45 degree offset, ambidextrous, um, the charging handle, which is made by Battle Arms, is completely ambidextrous. Really nice fat paddles. Yep. Now, depending on what you're doing, that could be a little overkill, but in terms of what I'm using this for, which is a nice range gun, it works completely fine. Now, um, their grip, so that's their grip. Hmm. It looks a little weird when you first see it. So basically you can adjust the angle of it. Right now it's pretty damn steep. I'll be the first to tell you, grip angle on ARs to me really doesn't make much of a difference. Like I can run it regardless. You know, people get like so like crazy mm -hmm. about it. I'm like, be honest with you, I shoot that as well as I'm gonna shoot something with a slightly more vertical grip. But if I wanna change that to a more vertical grip, you can, right? So it's just the design of it, that's fine. It does have a mag well. It's actually, while a little unique, um, just because of the cutout and the shape of it is actually very functional. Like it, it, yeah, it like, yeah. you, cause you have kind of this really nice index point with this cutout where it's like, you can get that lip of the mag right there. And like, it, it, I gotta admit while, while high style, it's actually quite functional. Yeah. And if you can make something look cool and it actually works well, I'm on board. I'll back you up on that. So, um, we do have Man. that. Uh, the trigger is, I would almost say, a little strange. It's like I don't know how to describe it. It's single stage in the sense that there's really no take up on that. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a constant um, pressure to the rear. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, I can't, it, totally different from a Geisley. Like from this side. Yeah. There's no wall, there's no movement there. No, you're just on the wall. So I'm pulling, 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 break. Yeah. And so it's not like a Geisley. It's not like a mil spec. It's kind of its own thing. It's yeah. like this single stage. You can run the piss out of it. We will talk about that in terms yeah. of the recoil impulse. <laughs> um, but hey, little things that they do. I actually talked to one of their gunsmiths over there. So they double stake the castle nut. This is, um, it's little things that wind yep. up showing that you actually give a shit. Um, we've talked to our buddy Alex at Trajectory Arms about this. And he's like, staking a castle nut is one of the easiest ways that you're going to find out if a company actually cares. 
because it costs zero dollars and takes about 20 seconds. And people are gonna, I already know someone's gonna jump in the comments. I know who this person is too. He's gonna be like, oh, I never stake any of my castle nuts. They've never backed out if you torque them in. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'll concede that. But why not just fucking do it, dude? Sure. Like, look, I can see two expert level people, right? And yeah. I'm not even, I don't even know who you're talking about, but it's like, hey, if staking a castle in is highly advised from people that this is what they do for a living, okay, cool. Like, I'm gonna, also, I'm, it takes I'm 20 that. seconds. Right? Bang, 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 done. And costs zero dollars. Yep. So, um, hey, it's a good sign that Battle Arms does put some attention to these. B5 stock, nothing notable there, but it does come with a nice stock. <clears throat> um, upper, so we have a 16 inch barrel. So this is not a 14.5, this is a full 16 inch gun. So you could swap the muzzle device over. If any of this is confusing to you, if this was a 14.5, then this would need to be pin and welded, which would be a con, because we will, ah, screw it, let's go ahead and talk about the, the muzzle device. Okay. This would probably be, um, it depends what you want this gun to be. Given that this is a 16 inch, obviously you can back off that muzzle device, throw in surefire dead air, name your muzzle device. Here's what the muzzle device does. It mitigates recoil very, very well. Um, Incredibly well. During the daylight, we are in harsh desert daylight conditions. There's zero clouds in the sky today. And I see flames coming out of the front of that thing. So like right here. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty crazy actually. Um, so it mitigates recoil very well. In terms of a pro that I could pay this gun, it is incredibly soft shooting. Yeah, like very it's flat, an incredibly dude. flat, very, very soft shooting gun. So like you can run the piss out of that gun. What's also kind of interesting is that it is extremely lightweight. Yeah. So for a gun to be that flat and that lightweight is almost counterintuitive because you would think you would need some weight mm -hmm you know, some mass behind it to balance it out. Somehow that gun stays very flat. The thumper, as it says on the bottom, the thumper muzzle device is part of what's doing yeah, that. Yeah, thumper. Now, here's the con to it, right? So to, to every pro, there's likely a con. The con to that muzzle device, no, not compatible with any suppressors. Correct. Right? So if you're gonna run this gun suppressed, one, probably swap out buffer springs. Um, I asked Battle Arms about that. I was like, how would this do suppressed? Cause it clearly it's not set up to, to be, be a suppressed uh firearm because of the the muzzle device they're like it's gonna run fine suppress swap out buffer spring and you and, you know call it a day yeah you'll be good to go drop a couple bucks you know um so hey there's kind of that breakdown on that I, aesthetically the muzzle device doesn't do much to me that's just personal preference looks thing. like a crown yeah like it ma it does match the gun in terms of having a little bit of wild factor um but that's just you know that's neither here nor there little stuff that we're talking about uh what else do we got here They've got a 10 and a half inch version as well. So basically their two links on all their guns are either 16 or 10.5. Uh, I would love to see them do an 11.5 um, just because yeah. I think 10.5 is a tad bit dated. I think most people have kind of migrated to 10.5 or 11.5. Uh, yeah. um, and I'd love to see a 14.5 too. Yeah. Just like, hey, chop it up a little bit. Um, either let me pick my muzzle device or pin and weld that. And hey, that is what it is at that point. Yeah. Um, it do, it's actually been a little while since I've, I haven't run a lot of full length guns. I've yeah. almost exclusively run shorties. Especially a full length, not suppressed. Yeah, Cause even then we throw K cans on a lot of stuff. It's so. kind of fun actually. <laughs> I like, mean, you kind of lose touch with how much fun yeah. a full length gun is actually. That's what, I mean, with how well that brake does, brake comp, flash hider, whatever it is. Not um, a flash hider. <laughs> definitely not <laughs> a flash hider. Yeah, guys, I know, not a flash hider. But you could, as fast as you can, at like 15, 20, 25, yeah. land all rounds. Yeah, you don't. I mean, this thing stays so flat. We'll have plenty of B-roll, I'm, I'm sure, showing how flat that is. Yeah. But it's, it's pretty impressive how good that does. Now, yeah. the downside is, Crispy, our videographer, was standing next to me when I was shooting. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to be honest, my hands got hot. I'm like, what? He's like, the flame from that like was hot on my hands. Yeah. Which is funny, because, I mean, that flame... Yeah, it's decent. A hundred percent. And we don't give him health insurance. So like if something goes wrong, like he's completely. We don't even fucking pay the guy. So of course he doesn't have insurance. No, we give him mm. uh, rice. He got a PB&J sandwich for lunch today. So yeah, and, from a gas station. And I'll be honest, I didn't even pay for that. Nope. So nope. <laughs> he had to buy his own lunch. So, <laughs> um, you know, anyway, tough gig around here, everyone, you know, kind of is what it is. A um, couple other things here. So it is a full, I, I mean, as mentioned, it's ambi, but full billet, um, upper, lower. So again, you know, that, that's some advanced shit. So point out what you were, you were showing. Cause I yeah, thought that so was Yeah, so one dope. thing I noticed where the brass deflector is for when it's ejecting the spent casing is hollowed out to shave weight. And then they cut out anywhere that can be cut out to shave weight. I mean, even up here in front of the ejection port, 
your mag has some cuts into it, your trigger guard that's all part of it, lightened up a little bit, lightning on the left side. I mean, they lighten as much as they can. So kind of cool. It's a very, very lightweight gun, that's for sure. You know, I had a gun at one time more skeletonized than this, where even the magwell was. Yeah. You remember that gun? No. Era, oh, I Era do. Three. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're gone now, but yep. yeah. Yeah. That was the hot shit there for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, couple other just kind of quick hit list thing. Um, all their barrels are individually head spaced. Again, showing, showing we that give you care. a shit. We give a shit. And, and they use Roscoe effort. barrels. So good barrels. Yeah. So um, mid-length gas system on this guy, black nitride bolt carrier group. There's no forward assist. Now they also have a, uh, there's a workhorse series. So that's more of like their duty rifle that does have a forward assist. Okay. So this is more of, um, I would want this more of like a sporting rifle, like guys like us, like totally adequate for anything I needed to do. Yeah. AKA, I'm not a cop, I'm not on the streets, I'm not kicking doors and uh, I guess no one's really kicking doors in Kabul anymore, but um, you know, like- Dudes are, but we just don't hear about it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of where I lump this. Let me pause you right there mm -hmm. real quick too. Cause my other gun, that that we were just talking about didn't have a forward assist either and i was in you know gun shop as i am usually and some guy was looking at a rifle that didn't have one he's like oh that's a piece of shit it doesn't have a forward assist i was yeah. like okay okay how many times were i asked him i was like you serve in the military he's like yeah but non-combat i'm like okay how many times in training have you ever used a forward assist none i said okay take this for what it's worth we know some guys that deployed a couple times I don't know anyone that's ever used a Ford Assist and a Green Beret showed me this. So if you don't have a Ford Assist and your bolt's not all the way forward, this cutout in your bolt carry group is oh, for yeah. your thumb to send it home. Yeah. So that is another reason why a Ford Assist isn't really necessary. I don't know anyone that's ever used one. And if you had it just slightly out of battery, you use your thumb in this little cutout in the BCG, push it forward, you're good to go. Yeah, I'll tell you my so, hack. Um, yeah. Damn. Yeah. So, it, hey, you know, disclaimer on this too. So this gun came to me maybe two months ago, right? So I've been running it, handful of range days, all that kind of stuff. And um, I have not cleaned it. I've done nothing to it. I literally have not thrown oil on it, cleaned it, nothing. Um, it's just some, it, let's be honest, it's a strategy of laziness um, that I've employed, <laughs> which is I'm going to receive something as you send it, and I'm just going to see if it'll keep going. Just send it. Yeah. And sometimes that goes well, sometimes it doesn't. It's gone very, very well on this. Um, See, and I don't do that with guns. I have my own little cleaning and lubing process when I get a new gun. I bet you do, big guy. So, I bet you do, big guy. But uh, I understand the principle behind it, right? Don't do anything to it. Let's just go run it, see if it fails, see if it doesn't. Yeah. Let's see how it does yeah. with a little bit of dirt on it. And um, so anyway, that said, all M-Lock rail, um, you know, a lot of material obviously removed. So if you needed something that was, that was the door kicking gun and like, harsh, crazy Middle East environments and everything. I probably want something that's a little bit more protected, but in terms of, again, what most of us are doing, this is perfectly adequate. Um, Swaparoo, one more time. I'm tired. I know, he's big big, big and tired. Um, so, MSRP, $16.99. Uh, I think that that is a, I think it's a really good price for that gun. And we're talking about a full ambi billet receiver set, Go down the list. I'm like, yo, I think that's a really, really good price on that I gun. think that's fair. Um, I think it's a great price. Um, I would say, hey, if it winds up being something that we've got a couple more things to cover, if it winds up being one of those things at the end of the video, you're like, dude, I think I might score one of those. I would just say call Battle Arms Direct. Tell them you watch the channel. They'll take good care of you, right? I've had some conversations with them. So just reach out and they've been cool dudes over there to deal with. A couple last things here. Um, we kind of talked about all of that. Um, Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I, I mean, really, we kind of hit it all. That's it? Yeah. In, in terms of, hey, it, it, it's in the recommend category for me. I, I've even told Chris as he was shooting, you know, obviously, hey, if I'm reviewing something, I've got it the whole time I'm reviewing it. Chris flies, flies up, he gets his first rounds that day, and vice versa. Like, one of the things that we're reviewing on Saturday, yeah. haven't shot it yet. Chris yeah. has been shooting it the whole time. But I would say, hey, look, it's been totally good for everything that I've asked it to do. It's nice to shoot. I think it's priced well. Um, aesthetically, it's a good looking gun. Aesthetically, it's a good looking gun. Um, they've got their workhorse series. So if like you did want something either a little bit more uh, simple um, or something that uh, like, I don't know, like you didn't want to spend that much, you could go that route. But um, for me, that does everything I've asked it to do. So um, really positive remarks there. Can't find much to criticize, to be honest with you. Can cool. I, I think that's it, man. I enjoyed shooting it. You know, the rounds that I threw through it and 
I mean, again, people are gonna, it, it'll do everything you need, not, nothing you don't. Like, it's a great rifle, yep. good price point. I think the day of like the $1,200, $1,300 BCMs or, you know, things like that are gone for quite some time with it's the way tough. the market and the industry is right yeah. now. Um, you know, Jeff Wilbur, we were talking about that with Jeff from Marty York Hydex too. So yeah. I think it's a great price point. You get a lot of good features. The fact it's 100% ambi is pretty awesome. Legit. So Legit. So cool. anyway, hope that helped. Hope you guys are doing well in um, whatever state or country you're watching this from. So yeah. drop us a comment below. Tell us where you're watching this from. See, I just tried to boost our engagement there with that. It's a pretty, little bit, huh? Pretty clever. I mean, we've had some dudes from Brazil, Portugal, Europe. All kinds of stuff. All over the place. So kind of cool. So anyway, drop us a line. Let us know where you're at. And we will see you boys and maybe the one or two females that watch this. We will see you later. Later. Later.